as I said, the only thing remaining to do with this book after we remove the bandage and give it one last look is uh, an overall dressing on all the extant leather, boards and spine, of a leather dressing. I'm not going to bother showing that. That's very straightforward. I would like to talk just for a few minutes about leather dressing, however. First of all, I should say there is some disagreement, uh, some differing opinions in the field as to whether leather dressing is now considered an overall good or bad thing for old books. It used to be when I was being trained, there was no question about it. Of course you dressed leather. Uh, it was also called and regarded feeding the leather. Uh, leather dries out after time and you replenish oils, etc., etc. Interesting point about that. In some collections, I have seen books that have been over the centuries so much used that the oil from the your hands, the reader's hands, have kept the leather in nice shape. Uh, it's, I found that very curious. You would think, now it does discolor the leather, of course, over time because there's also uh, dirt on hands and that adds to a general antiquing patina, shall we say, on the leather surface. But the leather itself, I have seen books that you would have thought would have been much in much more deteriorated state but due to the fact that they were constant uh, not constantly handled but um, handled quite a bit for all of their lives through a succession of generations of readers uh, the leather has retained uh, much more of its quality so having said that, there is now some thinking in the field that dressing leather impedes the leather's uh, long-term stability. I won't go into why you can look up the controversy. It's easy enough to find the differing opinions now. Suffice it to say, from a practical point of view, my clients give me material that has generally not been professionally handled over the course of its life, uh, of the uh, book's lifetime. Leather tends to be deteriorated, tends to be dry, tends to, this is very typical, tends to show the rigors of age. Aesthetically, dressing the leather vastly improves the look, the feel. It's true, it may not last that long, at five, ten years, and under adverse conditions it may start drying out again, depending on many factors. However, from the client's point of view, they are inevitably more pleased with an item they get back, which is now stable, it's functional, structurally functional, aesthetically as close to the original as possible, but it now looks better and it feels better because the leather is dressed. It no longer uh, has the, uh, the rusty uh, powder feel to it. So I dress leather. A book like this, uh, serious argument doesn't even spring to mind when I uh, decide to uh, finish the book off. But that's for myself and what I am trying to accomplish with practical bookbinding.
for everyday clients. Having said all that, leather dressing. I use what has come to be more or less a rule of thumb common leather dressing for books. It is 50% lanolin, specifically anhydrous lanolin, and 50% neat's foot oil. Lanolin. Anhydrous simply means the water has been removed. That's rather important. Should be available from pharmacies, drugstores. It's still to this day, as far as I know, used for ointments, cosmetics, all, all manner of things. The problem with lanolin is, lanolin on its own, is it is very thick. It will, you can apply it to leather, but it takes forever to sink in and it's, it more or less wants to stay on the surface and it's just very thick. Uh, thicker than butter, which I do not suggest using. Neat's foot oil, commonly available, it used to be at one time, from shoe repair places. Uh, some shoe stores still carry it. Leather, uh, uh, leather goods stores. Sporting goods stores. It is one of the, um, when you're breaking in a new baseball mitt, that sort of thing, or hockey equipment, uh, it's often used, applied to leather to make it more supple, etc. And to keep it from drying out between seasons, etc., etc., while it's in storage. Uh, leather paraphernalia for sports. The problem with Neat's foot oil is it's too thin. Uh, it's much like vegetable oil, which again, I do not <laughs> recommend the use of for dressing leather. So you have two main ingredients. One is too thick, one is too thin. If you put them roughly half and half, together, apply a little heat, uh, put them in a microwave for 10-15 uh, seconds, just enough to bring the heat up to uh, 90 degrees or 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, the uh, lanolin will melt, incorporate completely with the neat's foot oil, mix it up, let it cool a bit, and you'll wind up with a lovely cream, very easy to apply, sinks in fairly quickly, does not leave a lot of surface residue, uh, and it's a pleasure to work with. That's what I use. Now, uh, places like um, British Museum add other ingredients for preservation, etc., etc. I don't bother, but you'll find all manner of recipes uh, if you go looking for them. That's essentially leather dressing. The technique used in leather dressing is very straightforward, little um, portion at a time. Patience. Don't try to swab. Uh, just work a little in at a time. Be gentle. Use a soft cloth or paper towel, whatever, uh, especially if the um, actual surface of the leather is compromised. You don't want to uh, uh, you wouldn't want to do more damage than good. So, patience, little at a time, when you get to the edge of the boards or any area where you're approaching either paper or something non-leather, be very judicious. 
uh, I uh, do the edges of the board as the cover is uh, taken, uh, separated from the text block. Do the edges and then very gingerly start working around the edge as you approach the paste downs, uh, the edge of the paste downs, I don't get too close. Uh, this uh, dressing can bleed, which is to say it spreads more than the actual applied area. So bear that in mind, you do not want the oil of the leather dressing bleeding into any paper. That's always a bad thing. Probably doesn't do the paper any harm, but aesthetically it, uh, it can make for something you don't want in the finished book. So patience, a little at a time, a fairly gentle touch. Uh, you'll quickly learn when a book needs more dressing than, or when le some leathers need more dressing than others. Some leathers you put on a coat, by the time you finish the board, where you started looks like it hasn't been touched. That just means it's exceptionally dry, it's been soaking everything in. You can certainly go back and do it again until you're satisfied that uh, this is all about immediate aesthetics. So if that's your motive for uh, dressing leather, then you want to keep applying it until it starts to look like it's been refurbished leather. And that's all I have to say about that. And that is how you restore a 19th century publisher's leather-bound book of Tennyson's poems.